Now, what about comparison? Now, when you compare two proportions, you are actually comparing the occurrence of binary outcome variables between two groups. These two groups could either be the exposure or the treatment group. So comparing two proportions, you are comparing the occurrence of binary outcomes. So for example, two groups could be exposure or treatment. Outcome, those who develop cancer. Outcome, those who develop heart disease. Exposure to smoking, exposure to exercise. Now, this is very important. Data is usually arranged in a two by two table. So two horizontal, two vertical. So giving you two by two, that means you make a square. Now take note that data in a two by two table is labeled as A, B, C, then D. So A, B, C, and D. Now let's go over this question. How effective is a vaccination against a disease X? To answer that question, you will need to have a trial with two groups since you are testing for efficacy. One would be a treatment group. That means the group that receives the vaccination. And the second group would be the placebo or the control group, the group that does not receive the vaccination. So if we put this in a two by two table, we have the disease here as your label in the variable, another variable, those who receive vaccination and those with no vaccination. So if you remember the two by two table, it's letter A, B, then you have C, then you have your D. So those who received vaccination and had the presence of disease. Those who received the vaccination but had no disease. Those who had the disease and had no vaccination. And those with no disease and had no vaccination. So familiarize yourself with the two by two table. Now, let's put in some equations. So this is your variable, the outcome. Variables is exposure, the presence of a disease, the absence of the disease, and now you total all individuals. So if you check out those who were exposed, this would be A and B. So that's A plus B. Those who are not exposed, this is going to be C plus D. So please take note of this. So let's introduce the concept of relative risk. Now, relative risk is defined as the incidence of the disease in the exposed group divided by the incidence of the disease in the unexposed group. So the relative risk is computed by the incidence of the disease in the exposed group divided by or over the incidence of the disease in the unexposed group. So what is the significance of relative risk? And what is this new terminology, which is known as attribu attributable risk? So relative risk is an important measure of the strength association. Relative risk is an important measure of the strength association, while your attributable risk is about answering the following question. How much of the disease that occurs can be attributed to a certain exposure? So how much of the disease that occurs can be attributed to a certain exposure? Now the relative risk or the risk ratio, the RR, the relative risk ratio is the ratio of the probability of an event occurring in an exposed group to the probability of the event occurring in a comparison 
non-exposed group. So please memorize this term, your RR or your relative risk. So you are now describing the ratio of the probability of an event occurring in the exposed group to the probability of an event occurring in the non-exposed group. So please take time to go over this definition. So let's move on. So here's a classic example. So we have here the variable. So this is the disease, stroke. Those who have the disease, this is the yes. Those who don't have the disease, this is the no. And the risk factor, which is the hypertension, and those who don't have hypertension. So what is the risk of stroke for those with hypertension? So hypertension, stroke, so that's 146, or that's labeled as letter A. So you would compute this as 146 divided by 1,438, which gives you a value of 0 0.031. So the risk of stroke for those with hypertension. So take note, it's estimated at 0 0.031. Now what about the risk of stroke, which is 18, in those without hypertension. So you will now divide 18 divided by your total, which is 1419, and that's going to give you a risk of 0 0.013. So let's do this again. Risk of stroke for those who have hypertension, that's 146 divided by the total of those who are hypertensives, it's 1484. That gives you 0 0.031. Now what about those without hypertension? The risk of developing stroke, those who develop stroke but had no hypertension is 18, divided by the total of 1419, that gives you a value of 0 0.013. So for the risk for hypertension, that's 0 .01, 0 0.031, that is now 3.1%. The risk for non-hypertension, that is 0 0.013, that's 1.3%. So your attributable risk, take note, is now 3.1 minus 1.3. That is the risk of hypertension for hypertension and the risk for non-hypertension which means an attributable risk of approximately 1.8 per 100. So please do take time to go over this video again and do some practice sessions on your own. So how do we interpret the relative risk? If the relative risk is equal to 1, so take note of this, if the relative risk is equal to 1, that means there's no risk of outcome. If the relative risk is more than one, that means there's an increased risk of outcome. If it's less than one, that means there's a reduced risk of outcome. So a better definition of relative risk ratio would be it expresses how many times more or how many times less likely an exposed person develops an outcome relative to an unexposed person. So please take time to go over this. Feel free to pause the video anytime. And also remember that you're not allowed to log into more than one gadget. In the event that you log into more than one gadget, this will be caught by our security features and automatically your entire account will be blocked.
So here's an example of your two by two table. So those with disease, those with no disease. So those with disease, those with no disease. So we have a positive test, we have a negative test. So those with disease and test positive, this is what we call the true positive. So those with the disease and those who test positive, this is what we call letter A or the true positive. Now, those who test positive, however, do not have the disease, this is the false positive. This is labeled as B. Now, for those who have the disease and test negative, this is the false negative. This is represented by the letter C. Now, those without the disease and also do not have an, a positive test, so the test is negative. This is the true negative, and this is signified by the letter D. Now, winding down, let's mention the odds ratio. So what is the odds ratio? This represents the odds that an outcome will occur given a particular exposure compared to the odds of the outcome occurring in the absence of that exposure. So the odds ratio represents the odds that an outcome will occur given a particular exposure compared to the odds of the outcome occurring in the absence of that exposure. So here's an example of an odds ratio in a cohort study. So this is the question. What are the odds that the disease will develop in an exposed person? So you make your two by two table again. This is your variable. Those who develop the disease outcome do not develop the disease. Those who are exposed, those who are unexposed. So letter A, B, C, and D. So what are now the odds that an exposed person, so an exposed person will develop the disease? So this would be A over B. What is now the odds that an unexposed person, so here's the unexposed person, would develop the disease? So that's letter C over D. So when you say odds ratio, this is going to be A over B divided by C over D. So that means A over B divided by C over D. Your odds ratio would be AD. So A, D, B, C. So please follow through. The odds ratio, that's A and B over C and D. So that means that would be A, D and B, C. So take note of that. Here's another example. So here, here's your outcome, disease, whether it's present, yes, and no, and the role of vaccination. So those who have the disease and do had vaccination, that's letter A. Those who had no disease but had vaccination, that's letter B. Those who had the disease, however, no vaccination, that's letter C. Then you have those who have no disease and had no vaccination. That's letter D. So if you total this, that's A plus B, what you see here, and that is C plus D. That is what you see here, the C plus D. So that is your odds ratio. Now, let's put everything together. The comparison of characteristics of a case control and a cohort study. So what are we comparing here? We are comparing a case control study versus a cohort study. So please take note, the starting population of a case control is the disease group. The cohort group, the starting population, is the exposed group. The control group in the case control is non-diseased, while in the cohort, it's unexposed. So what information do we seek in a case control study? 
that is the frequency of exposure with regards to a risk factor. So in a cohort, the information that is sought is the disease rate. Now as to time to complete, please take note, the advantage of your case control, it is generally short. However, in a cohort, it is usually long. Now this is what I want you to memorize, okay? So take note, there's a little star there. In case control studies, the measure of association is your odds ratio. So the measure is your OR. That's case control. In cohort studies, the measure of association is the RR or the relative risk.